The drunk driver speeding on a mountain road plowed into a group of young German tourists in northern Italy early on Sunday, resulting in the deaths of at least six people and injuring 11 others. Now, the deadly crash occurred in a village of Valle Ruina, northeast of Bolzano in the Alto Adige region. Shortly after 1 a.m., as the Germans gathered near their tour buses, mourners later left candles and flowers at the crash scene, which was located along a two-lane road dotted by hotels and also piles of snow in the mountainous region. The driver of the car had a high blood alcohol content and was driving particularly fast. A Carabinieri police official in Brunico has told the Associated Press in conditions of anonymity because he wasn't authorized to give his name. The anti-government protesters in Baghdad have called on Iraq's parliament to immediately send American military forces out of Iraq following the killing of the Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. And also Iraq's parliament was scheduled to meet for an emergency session on Sunday amidst mounting pressure to expel 5,200 US troops who are based in the country to help prevent a resurgence of the Islamic State group. The Soleimani, who was the architect of Iran's regional policy of mobilizing militias across Iraq, Syria and Lebanon, including in the war against the Islamic State group, was killed in an airstrike near the Baghdad International Airport on Friday. Following his death, protesters in Baghdad's Tahrir Square have told the Associated Press that the United States did not respect Iraq's sovereignty and its airspace when it carried out the strike on Soleimani. At least about five people are said to have been killed and dozens of others injured in a crash early on Sunday involving multiple vehicles on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. The fatal crash involving a tour bus, two tractors, trailers and also passenger vehicles injured at least about 60 people. The tour bus flipped onto its side. A corona has confirmed five fatalities at the scene, which happened in Westmoreland County around 30 miles east of Pittsburgh. There were 25 victims, ranging in age from 7 to 52. The nine of the patients are said to be under the age of 18. At least about one of the 25 victims initially had sent, was sent to Excelsa, was transported to a nearby trauma center. And the rest of the patient's condition at this point of time is not known. Details of what has caused the accident is not immediately clear. And the National Transportation Safety Board is presently investigating as to what led to such a huge pileup. Meanwhile, the air raids carried out by the Syrian regime in the city of Ariha have resulted in, in the deaths of nine people on Sunday, according to the British-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. Multiple neighborhoods were targeted in the city, which is located in the Idlib province, filling its streets with rubble. White helmet volunteers went to the sites that were hit to recover bodies and also help the wounded. And this was said by Samar Al Hariri, the head of the White Helmets volunteers in Ariha. Wrecked cars, damaged buildings, and destroyed shop facades remain behind. The Syrian troops have been bombarding parts of Idlib since last month with the shelling and airstrikes intensifying since the ground offensive began on the 19th of December. Now, Idlib, the last rebel stronghold in Syria, is dominated by the Al-Qaeda-linked militants and is also home to about 3 million civilians. The demonstrators, joined by elected officials, walked solemnly across the Brooklyn Bridge on Sunday in a solidarity march against anti-Semitism and all acts of hate. The No Hate, No Fear march was organized by New York's Jewish community in the wake of the recent anti-Semitic attacks, including a knife attack at the Hanukkah celebrations north of New York City that left about five people wounded and also a fatal shootout at a kosher grocery in Jersey City. 
Now the crowds of participants jammed the streets in lower Manhattan as they waited their turn to get across the bridge. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, a Democrat, has also announced a state grant program that gives out funding to improve security measures against hate crimes at religious based organizations would have an additional 45 million US dollars available and it said that a state hotline had been created for people to call if they experience discrimination in New York. We are here. And thousands of families packed the streets of the Spanish capital Madrid on Sunday to watch a traditional parade marking the eve of the Feast of the Epiphany. Now, the Feast of the Epiphany, a Christian holiday, celebrates the three kings who followed a bright star to offer gifts of gold, frankincense, a resin used in perfumes and myrrh, the tree gum to the newborn baby Jesus in Bethlehem. Now, the procession featured decorative floats and also people dressed as the king's bearing gifts for infant Jesus and Christmas gifts are traditionally given in the day of the Feast of the Epiphany in Spain and also in many Latin American nations. A group of about 50 Santa Claus from various nations around the world rode a tourist vehicle to the old city of Jerusalem as part of a visit to the Holy Land. Now, the group was seen wearing costumes and visiting different parts of the city. And Chile's President Sebastian Pinera has launched a reform project to create a universal health plan following months of protests against social inequality and his leadership. A poor public health system and sky high private costs were among the main demands of the demonstrators. The new health plan will benefit the 14.5 million people who rely on public services as well as the 3 million using private care. In an unfortunate incident, at least about six German tourists were killed over the weekend after a suspected drunk driver crashed into a group of people. This took place in a town in northern Italy. Eleven other people were also injured in the incident. The 27-year-old driver of the car who failed a breathalyzer test for alcohol has been arrested on suspicion of a vehicular manslaughter. The tourists were standing along the roadside in the town and the vehicle rammed into them. Now, two people were missing in the Australian state of New South Wales as hundreds of people braced themselves to discover the fate of their homes in the bushfire ravaged region. The slightly cooler temperatures and calmer winds has brought some relief on Sunday to the Australian communities impacted by the wildfires. But as dawn broke over a blackened landscape, a picture emerged of disaster of unprecedented scale. The New South Wales Rural Fire Service has said that 150 fires were active in the state, 64 of them uncontrolled. The wildfires have so far scorched an area that is twice the size of the US state of Maryland, stretching across Australia's southeast quadrant, which is its most densely populated region. The fires have killed at least about 24 people, including a 47-year-old man who died on Saturday night while trying to defend a friend's home from encroaching flames.
And cities in China are holding a variety of traditional activities to welcome the upcoming Spring Festival of the Chinese Lunar New Year, which falls on the 25th of Jan this year in the Xijian Pro City in a light show has been held at the city's central square, lighting up the night sky while adding a festive atmosphere to the ancient city. The local residents and the tourists also enjoyed a dance and drama featuring the tunes of the Tang Dynasty. The dance drama presents China's rich historical culture of the Tang Dynasty to the audience. And about 200,000 South Africans took to the streets of Cape Town to mark the New Year with a colourful parade. The Cape Town Street Parade, once known as the Second New Year, dates back to the 19th century when slaves in South Africa were only allowed one day of rest per year. So this was the second day of the New Year and slaves had painted their faces dressed up as baths to hold their own celebrations. Now the large-scale celebrations have been delayed to the first Sunday of New Year to avoid any inconvenience. And Baudi and Baumei, the two giant pandas at the Belgian Zoo, have won the Panda Cub of the Year Gold Award. The ceremony of 2019 Giant Panda Global Awards was held in the Peri Diaza. It was organized by the Giant Panda Global website, which is a platform to promote conservation efforts for giant pandas. About 328,445 votes were registered during the online voting in 15 categories. There are gold, silver and bronze awards for each category and the zoo representatives from Belgium, Germany and Britain also received awards. Now the furry twins Baudet and Baume, born on the 8th of August, are a major attraction in the zoo. More than 20 cars were drowned under water when the icy floor under them cracked. Now the cars drowned to a depth of about 2 meters. The incident is from Russia's Rusi Island, located in the country's far east. But more than 20 car owners who parked their cars on the icy coastline ended up not just pulling out fish when the ice began cracking. But the towing services immediately came to the rescue, pulling out the cars from the icy waters. The Pope Francis has called for dialogue and restraint two days after the killing of a top Iranian military commander by the Americans speaking at the Sunday Angelus prayer. The Vatican, the Pope, did not mention Iran by name but spoke of a terrible air of tension that could now be felt in many parts of the world. The Pope has said, and I quote him here, I call on all sides to keep the flame of dialogue and self-restraint alight and war off the shadow of hostility. War only brings death and destruction is what the Pope said. And a memorial service for military commander Qasem Soleimani was held at the Iranian embassy in Damascus. The event was attended by the political advisor to Syria's President Bashar al-Assad Butana Shaban and several other directors of the political administration of the Syrian army. The Iran's preeminent military commander was killed on the 3rd of January in a U.S. drone strike on his convoy at the Baghdad airport. The Soleimani was in fact the architect of Tehran's overseas clandestine in military operations as head of the Revolutionary Guard.